All right, welcome on back, faithful, to another tutorial. We are. Oh, hello, Haru. Haru wants to hang out with us for the intro. Oh, and he's gone. All right, see ya. Oh, sorry. We are a little more than halfway through our tutorial builds for the Mark VI suit of armor, the torso, to be specific. This is the one that I did already, which we've been working off this model here. In previous videos, we've done the jetpacks here, we've done the this upper shoulder region here, the lower back was our most recent video, we did the center back there, the support. This time around, we are working on this front right section here. I guess we'll call this the pec. We're going to be I built one. I built the uh, the left pack already, so we're gonna do the right pack now. So everything uh, from about here on over, up to the lock right there, and then the lock down here. We're gonna save this middle section for another build video because we're gonna be talking about attaching it there and where we need to put reinforcements on the middle there, there, and then behind these two sections. So, without further ado, we're gonna jump right on in here. I've already pre-cut all my pieces. Um, if you watched the last video, you'll notice that I did pre-cut all my stuff beforehand. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if you're going to follow along with me in this video, what you're going to want to do before you even get started. Okay, you can have a little small piece like this here, which is going to be fitting in this section right there. Cut that all the way around, leave it flat on all of its edges. No trimming there required. As for this little, I guess, uh, horseshoe kind of shaped piece here. It's got a split on one side. You're going to edge trim the little interior part here. So an edge trim there, as well as a partial V cut so that this little piece here can fold down and connect. On this side, just a small V cut there so we can crimp this in. If you don't know what a V cut is, you can see it in any of my previous videos. I can do a quick one real fast. I seem to do this in just about every video. So we'll do it on this piece that I've already cut one on. V cut is where you've drawn a straight line. You're gonna put your blade in at a 45 degree angle, about an eighth of an inch past the line you've drawn, flip it over, do the reverse on this side like that. And you're gonna try and cut about halfway down into the thickness of the material. Make sure your blade is good and sharp for it. If you have to, snap it off, pull it out. There's your V-channel. It allows for a fold like that. The other cut you're gonna see inside here, I talk about an edge cut. That is if I were to take this piece here and cut in at a 45 degree angle, starting at the top like this, pulling back, leaving an angular piece like that. It helps pieces that are also edge cut come together seamlessly. There we go. I think it took me 45 seconds, maybe. All right, so that being said, we've got edge cut, V cut, V cut, set it aside. All right, this piece here, this half rounded shape there, no trimming on any of the edges there, just leave them all flat, planar surfaces. I have done a little bit of a detail cut here and that is gonna be going on this side piece here. You can see there's a full out version. We're gonna be building this right now. As for this one here, this one has a lot of cuts added to it. So let's show you what we got, okay. You're gonna to have to mark, kind of uh, draw to the edge where your dotted line comes across and then know where to mark that on the back there. You'll see dotted lines on all of your Papakura file pieces that you can look in the description below to find if you wanna build your own suit. If it's a solid dotted line, that means that it's gonna be folded down. If it's a dot dash dot dash line, it means it's getting folded up. These are all dotted, just single solid dotted lines. So they will all be getting folded down. So we make a small V channel cut here, here, and right there. Now, because we want it to go to the very end, you're going to do an edge trim right here. You can see that kind of angled section here. No edge trim on this side, just that one there. And that's so these can all fold in like this. Okay. You will be edge trimming this piece, this piece here. And you'll be edge trimming this piece here, as well as this full side. Leave this one straight, leave all the rest of this straight, and leave that straight. Leave this straight. Don't touch any of this here or on this side, okay? Those are all of our trims. Next piece here, this one is gonna be one of the locks. It's gonna go on the front part of the chest here. You can see it pretty well right there, okay? Right there. For that one here, we're gonna do an interesting kind of cut. We are gonna do, I guess, a, a trim cut on this piece here, but we're only gonna do it in one pull. The reason for that is we want it to be as clean as possible. 
So we are going to do the best we can here. Uh, the best way to do this is, number one, take the piece, say this was the piece I was working on. Say this is the top of it. If you want to get these little trimmed areas like that to give it kind of a cool um, tapered in look, so take the piece, flip it upside down, okay? Now you're gonna have, it'll take you a little bit of trial and error to get this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same 45 degree angle cut, but I'm gonna push all the way in until I hit the mat and pull back in one stroke, and that'll give us a nice crisp edge, provided that this blade is sharp. So kind of saw it until you feel it make contact, and then pull. Right there. See that right there? Nice, smooth little area. If you wanna make it meet on this side, do the same exact thing. Saw it into the edge there, if you can. If it's a thin enough piece, you can kind of saw the entire thing down like that. And you've got this kind of prism little shape here, tapered on up and in. So that's what I've done, the treatment of this here. You can see it's tapered there, there, and here. So I just took a little foamy sheet, put it on top for a little raised element. Okay, those are all of our pieces. We're gonna set to building. Okay, very little heating is gonna be done on this particular piece, which is nice. Um, the two sections we're gonna heat first, heat these two pieces here. We're just gonna curve them gently like that. Okay. All right, so now we're good. Who's here? Is that Taps? Mm -hmm. Tell him to come to the house. I can't. Tell him to come to the house. Okay, anyway, so here we go. He's with the other one. I think he's staying with Stuart? I think so. Okay, maybe we'll go out then. We're at the house tonight. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so I'm just curving this gently. Just real gentle bend because this is going to be the outside here where that rounded portion attaches. So just give it a gentle curve, okay? Not, nothing crazy, a little bit like that. Okay, so you can see it's already taking the shape I want. I always bend a little bit further than I think I'm gonna need because as this is a rubber foam, it's gonna try and bend itself back out just slightly. But you can see there, it's holding pretty well. Cools real quick. Okay, the other spot we're gonna heat up, heat again, this middle section there, and then we're going to push with our thumb Push up with the back of your with your fingers here, like your pointer and your pinky, and we're going to kind of fold it a little bit like that. We want a slight dip inside there, and that's going to be this section right here. So kind of heat going like I guess this direction, so we don't reheat that little tail there. And this is just a Wagner heat gun right here. It's about 25 and change over at Home Depot or Lowe's or if you live up north, Menards. Um, don't spend more than, really more than 30 bucks on a heat gun. You don't need anything with all the fancy bells and whistles. You just need a low setting and a high setting. All right, you can see how I'm kind of pushing them with my thumb, pulling up with my fingers. Give that little gentle scoopy dip right there. That's all we need. That is literally, that's all the heating that's gonna be done this entire piece save for one other one this little spot there but we'll get there oh, excuse me we'll hit that when i when we get there okay so you can see like you can see as is evidence with all these cuts here you know where the shape is going to go real easy to follow on this one here so we're going to start with the longest section here first and then work our way the rest of the way down so i'm using loctite five second professional super glue here this stuff is amazing dries incredibly fast, makes a super solid hold, and it bonds on a molecular level with this foam, so you really do not have to worry much about these edge popping once you've got this stuck. Okay, so now I'm doing that seam, I did about two inches worth, press it in, hold, give it just a second, and then fold up slightly so that the top of that seam can merge so that when we bend it back down, you shouldn't see the seam at all once it's painted, I mean. So take a little smoother piece here. These are just some little angular pieces that I cut. I usually cut five, six, seven, eight of these, leave them sitting off to the side. These are my scrap pieces here. Great for smoothing this foam in, helps it dry faster and disperses it over the top of the surface of this. So you can see right there, fold it now, boom. 
no seam popping. And when that's painted, you won't even see the seam there. It's awesome. We've made almost like a little shell, a domey shell along that. So I'm gonna do that the whole length down. Um, I know I didn't say this earlier, guys, but my name is Angel Legend, AKA Eric Rolon, AKA Spartan 117. And this is what I do. I love to cosplay, I love making armor, and more to the point, I love making Halo suits of armor. My favorite one is the Mark VI from Halo 3. But we are doing the Mark VI from Halo 4. It is also a beauty, and it is a big crowd pleaser at conventions. So if this is your first time building, I encourage you to get your hands dirty, get yourself some EVA foam rubber mats, go to town. Only uh, word of warning is, if you're first starting off, this is your very first suit, I would not start with the torso. I would start with either the shoulder or the bicep, or even one of the calves. Reason for that is, with the torso, it is an incredibly complex build. There are a lot of little tricks you're gonna learn if you follow my other videos building the torso, excuse me, the, uh, the shoulder or the bicep, or like I said, the calf piece. There's different techniques used inside each one of those builds, which all get incorporated into this one build here. So by the time you come back to this, you'll be a pro at it and you'll be able to tackle it a lot easier. Okay, so that whole shape has been done there. And kind of see how we've done it here on the side. Um, it's almost a complete right angle. It goes straight over and then straight over again. So we'll take this now, we'll turn it in. We're gonna run a little bead of glue along the inside here and then we're gonna just clamp it shut. And for time purposes, I'm not going to do it, but ordinarily I would come through here and I would reinforce all my seams with hot glue. Reason for that is while this Loctite is impressive and its hold is excellent along the upper seams, the back sometimes needs a little bit more strength, especially if you're, um, if you're moving around a lot, your suit may flex in ways you didn't expect it to, and it may try and pop open a seam. Um, with hot glue, the seam itself would just pop. But when you're using Loctite, if the seam is gonna pop open, it's going to actually tear the foam and it'll tear it out in chunks. You don't want that. So reinforce the back of all your seams with hot glue. I will be using a little bit of hot glue here in just a little bit for a couple spots here because I've made the trench cuts big enough to where it can adjust. This size here is 10% smaller than the original scale that it'll show up as inside Papakura Builder or Viewer. So this one has been sized for my wife. She is smaller and I know right where I need to fold it. Okay. So we are gonna go ahead and we will do the bottom section here now first. Same kind of thing, glue right on that edge there and then you're going corner to corner and then we're gonna fold it in. There we go. My wife, Ms. Kylie Rowland, also goes by Avarice Rose Cosplay. She just recently took the top prize inside the novice division at Anime Blast Chattanooga. So be sure and stop over to her YouTube channel, Avarice Rose Cosplay, and wish her a congratulations. She did Weiss from Ruby. If any of you are big Rooster Teeth fans, you'll know the show well. It's all over Netflix. You can't miss it, especially if you're uh, scanning through the anime section. It is right there. So be sure and check her out. Also check out her page on Facebook. She's got a lot of incredible photos up there from previous photo shoots from previous cons. Okay. There's the bottom there. You can see here, I've kind of pressed it in a little bit. It's got a little bit of a dip there. We're doing the same thing. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of bead of glue inside there and then press up in and hold. Okay, we want a pretty extreme angle. You can see there, we want a pretty extreme angle for that piece. So here like this, on a bead of glue right along the middle there. You don't need a whole crazy lot. This stuff, a little bit of it goes a long way. So press in, hold. Hold with one hand here, get inside there with your smoother piece, and make contact. Again, like I said with the smoother piece here, what it does is it disperses the glue pretty evenly along both sides of that cut there, and it kind of makes like a little shell in that trench, so it helps to hold the whole piece together a lot better. And all right, there we are. Almost halfway done with this, with this uh, shape. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and we are going to fold down this section here, but we're not gonna fold it down too, too crazily. Or are we? Actually, yeah, you know what? Let's just take it straight down. So another bead here. Again, not going 
too nuts with it. Fold it up. If you have to, use your table as leverage right there. Get that fold in. Smooth this out. I'm not getting in my own light here. All right. If any of you are looking to build your own suit of armor, if you look inside the description below, you can find links to all the armor files that I use via a Dropbox menu. You can also find links to um, Pretzel's Locker on Facebook. That is where I found all the original files. He's got a ton of different armor sets on there, so be sure and check it out. You can find everything from the original Halo games up to the current ones. Okay, so you can see how the shape is kind of turning out there. Just like this one here. Okay, so now next up, we're gonna attach this piece here. But you can see, if I try and walk this shape down, I'm gonna end up with a bunch, about almost half an inch over. We don't want that, okay? I want that little nub there to attach right to here. And then we're going to force the rest of this into shape and that will round out the side better. So best way to do this is take your glue, go right to the very end, do about an inch and a half maybe, yeah, about an inch and a half, and go this corner right to that corner. So pull it out, there we are. You can see I'm turning up again, kind of folding it up on itself there as I'm doing that. That helps to make solid, solid contact. So it's already nice and stuck. Smooth it out real quick. Perfect. Just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna push up on this, this piece right here. I'm gonna push it from the back side. We're gonna figure out where we need to hit it next. And keep walking the glue right down and along. Again, I'll probably go another inch and a half there. Hit it again. You can kind of turn this out, pull it away from it, and stick it down. Just like that. All right. Perfect. And for any of you who are on the fan page who are working on a suit of armor, I want to see your progress. So please pop over there and post the photos of what you got working on. I'd really love to know that I'm able to help you guys out in some capacity. Originally doing this torso build took me about five days to really understand all the folds all the cuts that I need, needed to make, um, learning what pieces I could exclude, which pieces I had to modify. So I hope that I am saving you guys some time here. Um, hence why I'm breaking down the torso into several videos because it is a complex build. Smoothing right, so down the top here. The beauty of working with this Loctite is it gives you really, really pristine seams, which I am all about, having a really clean look to my suit. Some guys like the welded look of just doing hot glue, but I find that with hot glue, if I'm out in the sun too long and I've only got hot glue on my outside seams, uh, the sun oftentimes will heat it up and it'll make those seams pop, which we don't want. So the super glue prevents that from happening, especially once it's got the Loctite on it as well you know those seams are not gonna pop open just from the heat of the sun. Might pop on from somebody uh, surprise attack jump hugging you, but we just hope that don't happen while you're in armor. All right, here we are. Okay, now we're gonna do a fold in here. Like I said before, we trimmed that inside there, so you're just going to fold it, press down, and just follow the rest of that shape up and in. So we'll run a bead of glue along there and then compress it in. So pull it away a little ways like that. There we are. And then fold that sucker up. Be sure and curve it. There we are. And it's pretty much held in there. Excellent. If you can't tell, the reason I love using this Loctite is because it makes this building process go so much faster. So if you're not sold already, maybe you will be by the end of this video. Okay. So you can see I've still got that cut on the inside there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to glue that as well, but we're going to go ahead and do some hot glue as well. 
I only want it pressed in just a little bit. I don't want to seal that whole gap up because if I fold that all the way closed, this piece here is going to look really awkwardly bent. We don't need it that far bent. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of Loctite at the bottom here just to get it to hold where I want it to. So I'm just going to press. All I need is really the bottom there to stay where it is. So that in there. Just about there. Okay, nice, there we go. You can see we've got a nice, easy curve to this. So while that is being held there, we'll grab our low heat um, hot glue gun. This one has two settings on here. I leave it at low, because if you set it for hot, it just takes too long to dry, and it gets incredibly, incredibly hot. It can, um, just takes forever. So go with a low heat setting, works just as good go over the seam like I almost go a quarter of an inch past my seams and I kind of zigzag it back and forth because I like to make sure that both sides are evenly coated so that they do not pop so keep that in mind we're reinforcing oh what'd you get her you got your little bird you're running around in the background okay here we are so like I said, I would normally come back through and reinforce all this. I'm not going to for the time constraints of this video, but that's reinforced there. So we move on. Okay. For this piece here. Oh, I forgot. This one's going to get heated up as well. I almost forgot about that. Okay. But beforehand, like I showed you these cuts here, we're going to heat this from the back side, and then we're just going to bend it down like this and kind of turn it a little bit. So almost like these are going to be facing straight backwards. It's going to go like this. The whole shape is going to do one of these, okay? If you have to, kind of push in with your thumbs a little bit from the back side here to give it that roundness that we want. Good, and here we go, bending it in, just like that. And like I said before, you're gonna to want to bend this just a little bit further than you think you'll need it because this foam rubber will try and fight you and try and flex itself back out. So bending it just a little bit further um, eases that transition when it tries to open up a little bit. Kind of compensate for that. Wow, hard, you were going hard over there. Oh man. Kitty on patrol. Okay, so there's our shape there. We're gonna go ahead and glue this side first and then we're going to fold it in. You can see again, like I showed before, there is an edge cut. Okay, so a little bit of glue here. Remove. <laughs> yeah, stick it in and fold it up just a little bit there. We'll hold it and smooth it in. Now, on occasion, I will apply some pretty. All right, you gotta go, little buddy. You gotta go. Go, 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 go play. <laughs> on occasion, I will liberally apply some glue and some heavier doses, but this one here is getting a pretty light treatment. You can see that seam there, nice and smooth. And he's back. Haru, you're all over this video, you know that. At least the sound of you is. Okay, so a little glue on the inside here, a little seam there. Oh, there he goes. Attack the tripod. Well, I can't take you anywhere, can I? What do you see? All right. <laughs> there you, go. you can see that side there it has kind of a almost a right angle to it. Not quite a right angle, but it, you can see the shape that I'm going for here. Okay. Same thing on this side. Okay. Again, little seam right there, and then we'll fold it. Give it a quick hold. Man, it must be crazy time. Sorry, my little kitten is going berserk. So please forgive me if you hear his little bell jingling in the background. He is quite amused with his new toy. Okay, so there we are. That old shape is just about done. Now for this small one here. We need to heat this from the back side as well, and then we need to press the shape out, okay? It's gonna be real hot, 
So I might suggest um, if you have like an of glove or an oven mitt, use your thumb inside of there. Like me, I've got pretty tempered hands from working on cars, so I can handle the heat. If it's your first time, I would not suggest doing what I'm about to do because it will be quite hot, okay? The thing about working with EVA foam is that it does cool pretty quickly, so just bear that in mind. Okay, I am pulling down my fingers here and really pushing up. I want this to almost dome out. Now, it's a small detail, but these little small details do matter and they do add up in the long run. You'll see what I'm going for here in just a second. Okay, really, really press it in hard because this shape will fight you because it's so small. There isn't a whole lot you can torque on it, so it's going to try and fight itself back out. Oh, very easy. Oh. <laughs> All right, there we go. See that shape there? It's a real gentle curve to it, but that's about all we need. Okay, back to this piece here. We're gonna take this here. You wanna go about an eighth of an inch down from, the, from this top layer here. So when this is attached, it's gonna fit nestled inside there. So if you have to, Kind of put it where it is if you need to mark it with a pen do that i'll sometimes do like a little saw back and forth action so i can see a line right there where i'm going to have the glue so we'll put the glue on this piece here since it is the smaller of the two pieces surface area wise we don't want to overuse our glue so that whole side there as i said again eighth of an inch down so turn that top edge in like this roughly eighth of an inch down there Press in and hold, okay? Just need a second on that. And then smooth this in. I find for interior pieces like this little edge there, they attach really quickly. It also could be because the foam itself has been cut on both sides, like the inside here and then the edge of that there. So if it is cut, it's gonna adhere a whole lot quicker. Okay, do this outside edge now. So right from the corner. Right on back. And if you are following along with this video, I would encourage you, as I said before, to do all your cuts before you start. That way you can build right along with me and go a lot quicker. Again, eighth of an inch down there, press in and hold. All right, leave it. You're getting blasted. Go, 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 go. All right. There we go. Let's move it in. Okay, now for the front here. Again, eighth of an inch down, kind of pull this piece down a little bit, press in with your fingers and really stuff it in there. Okay, and we're gonna hit this entire edge. Good. You're really only gonna get one shot at this, so kind of pull the foam back a little ways, find it and press it in like that. There we go, oh, perfect. And I didn't mention this earlier, but I've mentioned this in previous videos. Just be aware that working with Loctite, you're gonna get some on your fingers. It's just a hazard of working with it, but this is the best stuff to work with if you're building EVA foam. Um, I swear by it. And if building with using a Loctite can save me a couple hours, I will handle getting some glue on my fingers. Uh, Pledge and or Dawn works the best at getting it out. I would go with Dawn, it's a little bit easier on your hands. Okay, there we go. So that whole shape there, much like this one here, only for the other side. All right. Before we attach this one though, we're gonna go ahead and finish out the rest of this upper piece here. We have this little half round shape here now. You can see again, I've kept it totally flat. However, this side here is nice and trimmed. You can see on this one here, that little half round shape, it's up about an eighth of an inch from the top of this piece here. So give yourself about an eighth of an inch lift there because we want a slight raised look just like you can see on this one here. It's a little lip there. We want that feature to be in there. That's in his suit inside the game. If you want to try and do it as close to the game as possible, you're going to want that feature. So with this one, we are not, we're, we're just going to attach the front and then we're going to walk the whole shape on down and in there. We're not going to pull this corner in and stick it to the end because we need a little bit of extra space right there at the very end. 
So again, as I said, eighth of an inch down this rounded piece here. So we'll put the glue on this edge. Do about inch and a half there, like that. And then you're going right to that very edge. Eighth of an inch up, just roll the piece into it. Here we go. All right, and we'll let it hold. Take it a second there. Smooth that glue in. Another nice thing about using these little smoother pieces to smooth that glue in is it gets rid of all the excess and this foam soaks it right up so it really reinforces those seams. Okay, and we're just gonna keep going. Another inch and a half's worth. Um, if you guys are enjoying this video, please drop a comment below. I really love hearing from you guys and knowing that I'm able to help you guys out. Um, again, if you're working on a suit of armor, I wanna see your progress. Even if it's not the suit of armor, I would love to see what you're working on. So please pop onto the fan page. You can find it in the links below and show me what you're working on. Okay, almost done with this piece here. Another inch and a half there. I actually finished up this suit of armor fully. Uh, mine anyway, I'm building one right now currently for my wife. But I finished mine up about 10 minutes before my armor panel that I gave at a KaiCon this past August. The suit itself was completely constructed, but I had to lay some vinyl on my helmet to give it that cool hexagonal pattern. So we were right down to the wire and the panel went awesome. I will get it posted, I promise. Okay, pulling it back out of the ways here. A little more glue on this edge. Oh, there he goes. Boy, Haru, you are on it tonight, aren't you, huh? Okay, keeping again with that eighth of an inch down the entire length of the shape. There we go, real quick connection there. All right, the very end here. Just kind of pop that tail out a little bit. And tuck her back in. There we are. Excellent. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Now we need to secure the rest of the inside seam here. So just one run, excuse me, one, one, yeah, run one big bead of glue down through there. Wow. Say that five times fast. Okay. So a little bead. Oh, they just walk it all the way down. Right through here. Excellent. And press and hold. And that is going to finish out the top of this front section there. And that'll give us almost a right angle. It's like a really kind of almost like a table, if you think about it, in terms of how it's positioned on here. So let's move it on out. Let's see how we do that there. Okay. The last structural part of this is this little piece here. You can see right where it fits inside here, or is it right where that's going? One thing is, is you can see how that edge, it's like lip to lip. They are going right with that upper inside bit here. So, you can see how I'm going to do this. You're almost going to have to like roll the piece into shape here. So, what I'm going to suggest to do beforehand is kind of figure out where that shape's going to hit. Best way to do it is look at this little corner tab right there, and you can see where that little side lip juts out. Figure that corner is going right up in that little nook there. So if you want to hit that side first, I'll go ahead and do that. So we'll hit it again on the small piece here. Right on that front edge. Take this, and we're going edge to edge, so we want to turn it up a little bit like this, try and get right as solidly on that line as you can. We want that to be really seamless. That should be good there. Perfect. Man, I'll tell you guys what, my wife is gonna have a better looking suit than I have. Heck yes, I will. <laughs> okay. Kind of same thing on this side here. That little angled piece right there pretty much goes where that fold is. 
So if you can envision that, pull it to where you think you're going to need it and tuck in the front here. It will try and fight you. And what I would do from this point here, you have it tucked, I would take your pen and mark a line from the front here right to there. So we know, oh, that pen will work. There we go. So we know right where we need to line up to. So there we go. Like that. Now we can do the middle section here. So a little bit of glue right on the front. Just like that. And see, so we can line our pen mark up there, pull it over, stick it down, and tip it up again as well, just a little bit. So it makes contact, and we'll smooth that in. Here we are. And boom. Okay. Now we'll just finish up the shape. Remember, pull it in a little bit so it fits in that little nook right there. Press it down, get that hold there, and run back through with our smoother piece. Okay, now we'll tuck the rest of this lock kind of in this shape here. So you can see how I've got it here. I've got it coming back a little bit about a quarter of an inch past this piece here. Same thing on this side. I'm going to pull it in a little ways, and you'll probably be about a quarter of an inch down into there and a quarter of an inch back. So put glue on this little tab. Smooth it up. Like that. And you get one shot at this, so make it count. And boom, there we go. Press and hold. It's okay if you have that little tiny gap there, we can fill that with some hot glue. Actually, I'll do right now. I have to fill from the back first, so just give a little, just kind of plug that hole. Man, hard. Wow, it's going hard. Okay, fill the top here, and then use the iron to smooth that glue into that crack. It'll kind of level itself out because it's filling a void, but I still like to try and help it. And all right, there we are, just like that. Okay. Now, officially, this entire piece here is done, but we're going to add some detail pieces to it. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I like to add as much detail to these pieces as I possibly can, because I like to try and make them as true to the games. So you can see what I've got here. This is just a little 16th um, inch thick foamy sheet. You can find these in stacks of like 60 at Walmart or Michaels or pretty much any other craft store you're looking for. Dude. Man, Haru, give me a break. Okay, so I've already pre-cut this one out here. I just drew it out onto a foamy sheet, cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Works the best on these because you can get right into the shape a lot easier. And let's see how I've got this sitting here. Here we are. So right down that little trench there. And if it helps for you, do what I like to do. And get yourself a pen, mark your line, so like this here, just kind of mark your edges where the boundary of that shape is going to be. Okay, pull it on off, and we're going to put glue on the entire perimeter of, the, perimeter of this first, and then we'll kind of do some little slashy lines through the middle, which will then stick down. So the entire perimeter there, here we go, and then fill that shape in. All right. Now you're going to get, with this here, because it's so much surface area, you're going to get one shot with it. So, by this point, if you're, if you're like me, you've got a pretty solid handle on the foam. You've gotten to this point here, so you're going to know how to do little details like this. It's going to be no big chore, cutting up a foamy sheet and adding little extrusions and intrusions to your foam. You can see I cut two little windows inside there, again, just using an X-Acto knife. Really simple. Oh, there he is. Man, you dropped a mean deuce over here, didn't you? Now I gotta sit here and smell it. Yep. 
Everybody, this is Haru. Say hi, Haru. Come say hi. Mm -hmm. This is our kitten. All right. Go play, Haru. We'll make your suit of armor next. Go on. Gosh, it reeks over here. Oh, dude, you were rude. Okay. So anyway, see how these are shaping up. Next little bit here is this lock. That's the one that I showed you before. This piece is called out inside the build itself, but for structure, it's not even required on here. So that's why I call it a detail piece. Again, I've done an edge cut all around these front edges here. I left this one all squared off. Added a foamy sheet on top with a little window there to give it the lock look. Okay. This just goes right in the center here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Just hold it down one hand and kind of mark your, your outline. If you're using EVA foam, doing the Evacore method like I am, just use a ballpoint pen. It works the best on here. I mean, you could try and use a Sharpie, but the foam itself will suck the ink out of the Sharpie really quickly and make them pretty much useless after about one sheet. So save yourself the Sharpie, use a pen. All right, again with this here, doing the entire outline. Fill that whole thing. All right, there we go. And we'll go right to our outline that we did before. Corner down, corner down. And press and hold. You see the glue's kind of bubbling out of the edge. You kind of want the glue to bubble out the edge, honestly, because then you can go back through and really smooth it in make supreme contact and know that this shape is going nowhere. I mean, with that much Loctite on there, there's really no way the shape is going anywhere to begin with, but this is kind of like extra credit for those of you that are super meticulous as I am. Okay. And now what I would do is I go back through here with my hot glue gun and I would reinforce all the seams that I've done already. Always reinforce every seam you make. Personally, I say do it as you're building the piece, um, but this is an open piece, so you can get all these seams here pretty easily. If it was a more closed shape, I would recommend, like I said, doing it as you go. That way you don't have to try and fit a gun up inside a really awkward closed shape and try and hit like something way in the far back. So anyway, guys, there you have it. That is the, I guess, the right side of our upper chest. So figure this is the pack, we got left pack, right pack there. And they're going to be fitting on to, they'll be sitting about this far off your actual chest, and they'll be sitting about this high up here. Again, this is a really small one. This is for my wife, so it will look a little wonky on me here. This is 10% smaller than the original scale. In the next video, we'll be building that center section that joins these two pieces together. So anyway, guys and gals, thank you for checking out this video. Again, my name is Angel Legend, a.k.a. Eric Roland. Please be sure, and if you haven't yet, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Be sure and check in next time for Ask the Chief, and until next time, take care.